Is Canada losing the innovation race? We look at how to keep Canada competitive on the world stage. Also, our technology editor picks apart the new wearable gadgets on many a wish list. I'm Afan Jodhri. Welcome to Globe Now. How many Canadian companies would make it on a list of the top 100 global innovators? Well, according to Thomson Reuters, just one. BlackBerry. And we are all well aware that BlackBerry struggled in recent years, but it gets at a bigger issue. Is Canada doing enough to develop its innovation potential? To help us answer that is Matthew Saunders, President and Managing Director at Ryerson Futures Incorporated, which is all about developing new tech ideas and getting them to market. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Let's talk a little bit about the innovation race, because we hear so much about it. Is Canada winning it or losing it? I think we're competing in it. Yeah. Uh, if you look at some of the programs and some of the clusters across the Canadian market, there's lots of great stuff happening here in Toronto. Uh, obviously in Communitech and Waterloo, there's lots of great stuff going on. Uh, you see bits of it in, in Vancouver and some of the financings of companies out there recently, and also in Ottawa and Montreal. So what has to change in order to increase the number of <laughs> Canadian companies on that top 100 list? Uh, I think if you look at the support programs that have been put together, the kinds of stuff we're doing, uh, where we're helping incubate and, and connect these companies to market, one of the biggest challenges for early stage technology companies is to get that first customer, prove out the model, and then be able to replicate it and scale it. So what would be an example from your incubator hub that you're excited about? Uh, one of the most recent that's, that's started to get some really good traction is Figure One, mm -hmm. which you can think of it as Instagram for doctors. Okay. Uh, they've just raised some financing from Union Square Ventures out of New York, which were one of the first investors in Twitter. Um, these are folks that Figure One's getting a, viewing over a million images a day by medical professionals. 25% of U.S. medical students use the app on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, one that's starting to grow and scale very, very quickly. I mean, that's interesting. They had to go to New York for financing. Is that part of the problem? Uh, one of the challenges. They did have some earlier rounds that they had done in Canada, yeah. uh, but the the size of funds, when you get to that point, there's not a lot of Canadian venture funds that are, that are writing checks of that size. There are a few, like Relay Ventures and some others that we work very closely with. So in, in terms of government help, you know, are these small tech companies in Canada getting the help they need from government? There's a lot of great government programs, but then there becomes a gap once they start to get traction in the market. You know, it's okay, and it's probably easier to raise the early stage capital, the few hundred thousand dollars. Right. but there's a big gap between there and raising the Series A financing, and that's sort of half a million to a million and a half. There's not a lot of capital in the Canadian market to help these companies grow. And then once they start to get traction, of course, it's much easier to raise financing. So being competitive in the global innovation race is not the same as winning the global innovation race. And sure. I'm just wondering, what is the most important thing that has to happen between com being competitive and winning? Well, I think you look at other markets. It's not just the U.S. market where companies need to expand to. There's a big market out there. We've right. recently launched a program uh, in Mumbai, India, in partnership with the Bombay Stock Exchange. So we're helping companies from the Canadian market connect to the Indian market, and vice versa, bringing companies. Last week, we had five companies from our program in India over here meeting with Canadian investors, meeting with Canadian customers, and they're looking at Toronto as an entrance point into the North American market. So we're helping bridge that gap as well. But you look at a, a country like India, lots of great things going on, You know, 980 million and cell phone subscribers, a uh, new prime minister who's come in and done lots of great stuff in a short period of time, a lot of capital being attract attracted to that market. For, so for us to tap into the talent there mm -hmm. and to help grow and scale the companies that we're building here and companies that are being built there is very important. Okay, and, and briefly, the one thing that we should be watching for that'll tell us, you know, that this innovation revolution has kicked off. Well, I think you'll start to see more and more exits. You look at like a fund like Omer's Ventures that John Ruffalo has, he's made some big bets on some big companies. I think you'll start to see some of those exit or some of those go public in the next little while. And I think you'll start to see you know, companies, small companies that are coming through the programs like ours uh, that are starting to get some substantial traction in the market. And it's exciting to watch that. And it's really about creating that, call it breeding ground, if you will, for those companies to get plugged in and connected uh, into the market and grow their customer bases and start to generate revenue and get traction in the market. And okay. then they'll become successful. Matthew. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, we want to hear from you. Share your story about a little-known Canadian tech innovation success story. Tweet us at Globe Now. Staying with technology, wearable gadgets are a growing area of development, and the Apple Watch is just one example on the horizon. But don't be too fast in adding these to your Christmas wish lists. The Globe's technology editor, Shane Dingman, takes a closer look at whether you should bother with wearables just yet. Intel has released something it calls Mica, a wristband wearable device it hopes will compel some early adopters to buy into this emerging product category. But I'm going to tell you why you should not buy it, or really any wearable device, on sale this holiday season. 
There are a couple dozen smartwatches or smart bands out there that will track fitness metrics as well as perform a slew of navigation or communication features. The goal is to let you leave your phone in your pocket or purse. There are several variants being built on platforms like Google's Android, Microsoft surprised everybody with their own version, and even Will I Am is selling a wearable. Intel's Mica is really more of a chunky bangle, a piece of jewelry with its own included data SIM, so that it doesn't need to be connected to a phone to access the mobile internet. It has interesting things like a Yelp recommendation engine, but is missing some really basic stuff, like a method for inputting text. There's no voice or on-screen text inputting available. But as different as it is from the rubber or watch style wearables that we've seen thus far, it's almost certainly doomed or at least it will be dramatically different by this time next year. Why? Because Apple Watch is coming to town in 2015. And when the most valuable technology company in the world wades into an open market, it tends to create a lot of copycats. As if to remind everyone not to buy the half-baked stuff from Samsung and Intel, Apple released the developer kit for its Apple Watch on Tuesday. That may not sound like a big deal, but these WatchKit software tools will let developers create those apps that exploit the unique features of the watch. Now, can we be sure that Apple is going to remake wearables in its own image? Nothing is a sure thing, but when it comes to consumer tech, there's really no safer bet than Apple. Which is why I won't be buying any wearables for anyone this year, and you shouldn't either. That's all for today's show. If you've got a moment, hop onto Twitter. Wearable technology, how convinced are you? Tweet us at Globe Now. I'm Avon Chaudhry. Thanks for watching.